driving circular economy. But let me assure you that when we talk about all the major brands, all major businesses, they are increasingly making choices that put humanity, that is families, ahead of profits. It, it may not appear so, but the industry is changing. And it is just not altruistic. There is immense value in going circular, as you will learn while using this toolkit. But maybe, maybe your customers, maybe your customers are not really going circular at the moment. You know, you, they're still evaluating. They're still the fast fashion guys. But then that's where the governments are stepping in. And we see, for example, the European Green Deal, uh, which has just been recently put into action. Uh, the Green Deal mandates, for example, the right to repair, extended product producer responsibility, standards for inputs, as well as traceability. There is going to be a great thrust on de-risking supply chains, especially considering the uh, situation that we are in right now. For example, the US is currently stuck up for uh, personal protection equipment and China is making some demands out there. So th a lot of businesses, a lot of countries are going to be looking at, okay, how do we make our entire supply chains? How do we de-risk our supply chains? We must also not forget that we are, current, we are going to be facing uh, the possibilities of deflation, even for recession, for sure. Hence, all the governments across the world are going to want to grow out of this problem. We just heard today morning about Japan's $1 trillion uh, package. A lot of that money is going to go towards ensuring self-sufficiency. A lot of that focus, a lot of that legislation is going to be around traceability, transparency, as well as resource efficiency. And all of these keywords are something that belong totally in the whole circular economy paradigm. At the individual level also, consumption, especially in fashion, is going to get hit. We can't run away from that fact. But new business models, especially those which are supported, which are supported by the circular economy and which play very well into the circular economy, they are going to be actively helped by the upcoming situation. Now, before I go any further, you know, I just want to address any skepticism that might be at the back of your head. You know, at, at a personal level, nobody can question the benefits of a cleaner environment. At a market level, transparency, traceability, circular, uh, the supply chain efficiency, better business models, they all make sense. At a statutory level, the push towards circular economy has its obvious macro benefits. But then still, the questions arise, you know, is this a fad? Is this just greenwashing? Can it really be a competitive advantage? Will it cost a lot? Just another standard or is it just another non-tariff barrier? Now, these are some of the questions that could be playing in your mind. This toolkit is designed to empower you to answer these for yourself and for your business. I can tell you for a fact, circular economy means better business. And here's a little secret to why you should seriously consider circular economy. It's a small price to pay for being part of a trusted network part of a trusted, transparent, circular supply chain, optimized for efficiencies. Each one of the members of the chain are obviously locked to a certain extent because of this optimization. And hence, business continuity is one of the biggest benefits of being part of a circular supply chain. As an example, think of an h and H&M supplier today. You know, how many times would have everybody called H&M a very tough negotiator? But today, when H&M promises to pay for the ongoing production and is open to ensuring survival of its supply chain. When other brands are simply canceling and walking away, at a time like this, the suppliers of H&M have business continuity. So the secret, one of the major secrets for going circular economy is business continuity. I just want to spend a couple of mi uh, a minute on this particular diagram. This in a nutshell captures uh, quite nicely, if not somewhat basically, the textile recycling or the apparel recycling as, as we visualize it. You can see you have on the top left corner, you have the raw materials, you have the production processes, you have garment production, textile manufacturing, and even within that, you have these pre-consumer waste recycl uh, recycling loops. And then you further go to the retailer and then to the user. And even there, you have certain loops for reuse. Then you have to the collection, sorting, and separation. And then there could be loops which go back to the manufacturing or go towards compostable garments as well as recycling. So you see this kind of gives you a picture about how this industry is looking at itself as a circular, in a circular paradigm. So how am I going to do this? Uh, the webinar is structured as max about an hour of engagement. 
Uh, there's going to be about 40 minutes of presentation and there's going to be about 20 minutes of Q&A. The questions, and we are, you are most welcome to ask them in the chat box. My colleagues will be working to collate all of them and then we shall be answering those questions after the pre presentation. So as we go into the circular economy toolkit, the goal of this webinar is to equip you with tools which help you to, <clears throat> sorry, which help you to understand what circular economy means in a fashion perspective. Now this is very important because most of the times when you're looking at circular economy, when you're talking about circular economy, it's a very holistic view. But what we want to do is give you the lens of fashion to it. We want this, uh, this toolkit to enable you to evaluate circular economy for your business. We want you to consider the circular toolkit to evaluate your business to leverage circular economy for the competitive advantage as well as benefit from the network effects. One of the advantages of the toolkit is that it is self-paced. Once you have it with you, you can go through it at your own pace. You can share it with your team members. You could even build it as a template as you make, as you build circularity through your business. As somebody also asked earlier, we will be sharing these slides and information separately. Now let's get to the good part. So as you can see, I have put together a list of 10 concrete tools for this toolkit. Let me start with the major problem that all of us face when we are looking at finding information or going about any particular research. Information overload. And that's apparent because there's just too much information. You type circular economy in a Google uh, search box and you'll come through a list of reports and you'll, you'll probably click on the top two and three, and then you'll probably get lost in the maze of these reports. So this toolkit is a carefully curated set of resources that enables you to learn the ropes of circular economy without getting lost in this whole maze of reports. This toolkit is your guide to look at circular economy with a fashion lens. Think of it as a launch pad. For example, when, when you're starting any new paradigm, you need to firstly educate yourself to understand the language. And believe me when I tell you that circular economy also has its own language. So you want to understand the language of this paradigm. From there, you want to see how are others really doing this? How are they really using this to leverage it for their business? And that's, some, that's related to the case studies. Now, given that you might be, you are interested in the space, you then need to set a baseline, which enables you to measure your progress as you implement, as you bring circularity into your business. And that's where you know you need to measure circular economy in your own circular, in, in your own business. That's, that's point number three. And then once you've sort of got this particular place where you are in this whole paradigm, then you got to translate your business into the circularity model. And that's where you can use a tool like the circular business model canvas to help you do that translation and also to share that within your team. Because at till this particular point, you're all of all of what you're doing is evaluating it as a paradigm. But now you really need to share it with your team so that all of you can speak the same language and can also get to work together. For sure, as before you get into implementing this in your business, you also want to look at what's really happening around you. So then again, we talk about events as to what are events that you can really leverage to talk with your peers and understand what's really happening across the industry. I also give you certain India specific organizations because for sure these organizations as they work with the government to implement standards around the whole circular economy, you want to see where is this industry moving to? What are the standards that are coming up so as to leverage those? The next point is about industry leaders and that's again something very crucial to follow as beacons. You know, you understand, okay, what are the new innovations? What are the new things that these industry leaders are really working on? So that really helps you to engage in conversations. And since we are the early birds of the industry, we can really have an opportunity to collaborate with these industry leaders. The last three is the educational videos, the books and the online courses. Now, a lot of you might feel the need to spend a lot more time in understanding, okay, what is all of this about? You might want to have more content around this. And hence I put it down there, but frankly speaking, the reason I put it down there and not right up in the education resources, because all of us here are practitioners. We want to do our, <clears throat> sorry, our research, and then we want to immediately get to implementing it in our business. Please feel free guys to share in the chat box if there's any questions that might come to you. And I'm now going to be walking you through this toolkit. Firstly, let's just start with the educational resources part of the toolkit. Now, obviously, 
when you're starting out with the whole circular economy with the fashion perspective, you would have a lot of questions. What you want to do is get this good quality information and then immediately start to move to apply this. So here's a curated set of articles that will help you sort of get the language right, if I may call it. So the first question is answering, you know, who really coined this term circular fashion. So here, when I met Dr. Anna, and this is uh, her website, and she's one of the two people who supposedly invented this term right back in 2014. And the way she shared this with me is that H&M and uh, Anna, both of them came up with this term around about the same time. Now, the interesting point that I want to mention to you out there is that was just about 2014. So that's just like six years ago. That tells you how young this particular place is. And each one of us who's working in this paradigm, we are sort of developing the cutting edge of this industry, this whole circular paradigm. The next question that you would probably have in your mind is, okay, what is circular economy? What is circular fashion? So I give you a very good article at Common Objective, which talks not only about what is circular fashion, but also talks about what it is not. And that will give you a good perspective because this is a term that is being bandied about quite a bit in the industry today. And you want to make sure that you're focusing on the right things in your business. I also want to quickly mention out here that Common Objective is currently, uh, they have been on the scene for quite some time. You might probably, some of you might remember Ethical Fashion Forum. Uh, that's what their, was their earlier avatar. They are a well-regarded information actor in the space and they are currently offering free access to all their tools and all their resources on their platform. I would encourage you to go and have a look. We then come to why. Why do we need circular fashion? Why do we need circular economy? I give you a good article out here from the World Economic Forum, which talks about what, how this entire industry, how the whole circular, fashion, the circular economy paradigm is a 4.5 trillion business opportunity. It also highlights the fact that circular economy is a great lever in our action against climate change. I want to take this point here to connect this up with the current scenario that we have around COVID. And if we think that the COVID situation is bad, I want you to just think about the horrors that climate change will unleash. Think pathogens and climate changes for which we have no answers, no solutions or medicines. The next point I want to take you to is to answer, you know, if at all we do want to go down this path, then how do we make this approach viable? A recent Fashion for Good report effectively captures these challenges of financing these changes as we want to drive circular fashion through our business. It's, it's a great way to understand how is the industry really preparing for financing these models and what are the benefits that accrue from there. The next point is how and how will implementing the circular fashion supply chain help me increase my business? And that's the question that I want, to, want you to have in the back of your mind as you go about through this toolkit. There is no template to that answer, simply for the fact that each business, all of us that we have, is quite unique. So we, want, we need to spend time in our own business using these tools to see the opportunities, to see how will this help us increase our business. I've already explained one important point to you, which is the network effect. And the last point on the educational resources is again a learning path on one of the, uh, given by one of the leaders in this space, which is the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. I would encourage you to visit that link and spend some time on the website. That gives a very holistic picture to this entire uh, paradigm of circular economy. So that's just about for the educational resources. You would have noticed that I've not really gone to a particular facet of circular economy at the moment. What I've given you are the initial thoughts which will help build the case for circular economy, for circular fashion in your business. Now, given the point that you, that you understand, you know, that, okay, this might be something that is good for me, good for my business. So then what do you need? Well, I would suggest that you spend some time understanding case studies. And this is essentially social proof because it's a good way to find out how others are doing it and what are the best practices for your business. Now, I give you a, a study, and this is one of the first studies across the entire supply chain for traceability and transparency. This is done by the CNA Foundation. It's again primarily based in India. And what it does is it gives you a great set of data points and how they are captured across the entire supply chain and how that information moves through the supply chain in order to prove the traceability, transparency, and the circularity in the process. Another good read is Closed Blue. And this is an example of a business 
that takes its own garments back and then recycles it to create new garments. And that will again give you a very good idea of, of how the whole recycling game is played out when you're talking about recycling garments back into the supply chain. And then of course, let's not forget, circular economy, circular fashion is not just about recycling. It's all about business models also. And so I give you Rent the Runway. Now that's an excellent case study around how, and they're doing pretty well, around how business models based around circularity are going to be the way going forward for a lot of fashion. And lastly, I do want to make a mention of some very interesting alternate materials that are coming out, which enable us to literally grow materials from waste. Some of you may have heard of this material, for example, which is made from waste coconut water, where microorganisms then convert that water, create a layer of material, which is very similar to vegan, vegan leather. So that's sort of the second part of the case studies. Now, once you've established that, you know what? This is something interesting. This is how others are also doing it. Now you need to measure circularity. You need to measure where you are in this particular whole circular paradigm. So here I give you a tool called Circulitics. This is a tool which has been recently launched by Ellen MacArthur. And it, what it does is it provides you some guidelines in order to understand how do you really measure circularity in your business. It's an interface where you enter details and just to let you know, it's an invite only uh, sign up where you have to apply to be part of this because it's a recently launched tool. This is not something that you can download and just do it within your own business. You still have to work with the experts on this. So what it does is it, it goes beyond assessing product and material flows at just, you know, at the company level. It goes to the extent of understanding how have you achieved circularity across your entire operations. And it uses the widest set of indicators currently av available to do that. I would encourage you to go up and sign up on this to start getting a measure of where you are on this entire circularity paradigm. For sure, let me also tell you that all of this information helps you with decision making and strategic development for circular economy adoption. Not to forget, there are also others in this space who are doing, who are doing some great work in order to define how to measure circular, circularity in your own business. So for example, we have Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute. We also have the Global Reporting Initiative. We also have the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. All of these are using frameworks and different metrics to help you measure circularity within your business. Now, yeah. So what all of these indicators do, they give you a baseline to track your progress as you move through your move your business through the circular economy paradigm. So the metrics are not just of great help in establishing a common language to communicate the progress, intent, and information to stakeholders, but it is also important that you do not get too lost in the details because what you do not want is to just keep measuring things, but what you want to do is leverage these tools for what they provide, and that is better integration into the whole circular economy paradigm and the network. I just want to spend a couple of minutes out here on this particular circular business model canvas. Now, I hope I, I, I'm assuming here that a lot of you would have some uh, sort of hands-on experience with the business model canvas. For those that don't, we will be sharing some details about where you can do a little read up about that. But essentially what a business model canvas does is it translates your entire business processes onto paper and it becomes a very handy tool in order to understand where and how the business flows, who are the key stakeholders in this, who are your customers, who are your suppliers, what's your value proposition, and all of those factors that really interplay in your business, they are put onto paper, onto a, onto a business model canvas. However, that is not sufficient for a circular business model canvas. And I give you an example out here where when we are defining a circular business model canvas, not just must we account for the main sort of flow of materials or goods through our business, but we must also account for the smaller loops. So for example, a garment manufacturer might have fabric waste that can be recycled back to the fabric manufacturer. For example, there might be the, the garment manufacturer could also be re reusing these offcuts to create other articles. So all of those smaller loops within a business are then translated 
onto a circular business model in order to understand, in order to see and visualize and also find out new opportunities. What this also does, it, it, it helps you to share and have a common language of understanding between all the stakeholders, between all of the people in your own organization. Because you will be surprised to find you know, how, how, how many good ideas and how many good opportunities that people within your organization would suggest in order to implement circular fashion. I also want you to have a look specifically at this particular part. And this particular part, we detail the, the secondary loops, as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, where we show the smaller loops, one, two, three, four, five, which are from the recycling bit. And also from within the process, we have the other smaller loops. Uh, I see a lot of questions coming out there. Rest assured, we will be getting to a lot of those at the end of the webinar. Thank you. Now, now, that you've all, now that you have a good idea, you know, this is a tool for you to convert your business processes onto a circular business model canvas. You would definitely, before you start spending a lot of money and start spending a lot of effort in implementing this in your business, you would definitely want to check out, okay, what are my peers doing? A great way to do that is to go to these events. And a lot of the conversations that happen at these events would provide you a lot of value in understanding what are the latest business practices, who are the players who are working on this, who are possible interested parties for this. And I give you these examples of, for example, Gartex itself, which is a great platform in order to connect with your peers who are all interested in pushing the circular uh, economy and fashion paradigm. I also talk about circular, the sustainability day at Lakme Fashion Week and the circular design challenge, which is becoming a hotspot. Uh, and forgive me for using the word hotspot, which is becoming a, a, a space for a lot of these people who are interested in, in circular fashion. And I also want to mention out here, Circular Apparel Innovation Factory Conclave. And the first one happened in, in uh, December. I think these people are doing a great work in bringing together various players in the ecosystem who all speak on the same language and who are looking to collaborate and innovate on the circular economy paradigm. I also want to take this moment out to mention the online space. You would have observed, and as we are here today on this particular webinar, uh, uh, a lot many people, uh, there has been a lot of activity in the online space. And I can tell you that for sure around circular economy also, there is a great set of events that are happening online, which will help you understand, which will help you create opportunities, which will help you collaborate with people who are interested in the whole space of circular economy. I also want to give you certain links to certain India specific organizations. So for example, there's FIKI. Uh, FIKI has a circular symposium where they focus specifically on the whole circularity paradigm. That's a great place to find out about policy and about uh, specific directions that the government is working on and what is being recommended by the industry. Niti Aayog, you will be surprised to know that Niti Aayog has already done work on circular economy not so much on circular fashion as of now, but they have been working in the metal space and they are definitely somebody to follow as to what will happen in the near future. I also talk, I also uh, link, I also share a link to Center for Responsible Business who have a circular apparel policy innovation lab, uh, which is supported by the CNA Foundation. This is again all about policies and implementation mechanics to, to accelerate circular fashion, circular apparel in India. Let me also mention uh, Law Days Foundation, which is the new name for CNA, who, are, who have been doing some great work in this space. I must also mention out here uh, the United Nations uh, Environmental Program, and they are people who are very much keen to bring about change in this space, because for sure, circular economy, circular business has huge benefits for the environment at large. I've already mentioned Circular Apparel Innovation Factory. So all of these players, all of these India-specific organizations, these are people you can reach out to, to understand more about what's happening in this space, to know about what's the latest, to know about policy directions, to know about opportunities or collaborations. All of that information, all of those possibilities exist. Another tool in your toolkit is, are these links to industry leaders. I mentioned here Fashion for Good. This is an accelerator based in Amsterdam. Uh, they have recently launched in India, in, uh, in Asia also. Uh, they do excellent work across innovation in the whole sustainability and circularity space. Most of the innovations that are currently being done as pilots or prototypes across the major industries, apparel industries, 
A lot of them have come in through this particular accelerator. I would encourage you to visit the, the site to see what are the innovations, what are the possibilities and collaborations that are happening out there. Forum for the Future, they are also uh, is, uh, important stakeholders in this conversation who are regularly uh, focusing on circular economy. There is also a list at the Ellen MacArthur website which lists not only just the smaller brands, uh, but also the SMEs, also major fashion brands who are actively working in the circular economy space. Now I come to the part where we talk about, you know, for a lot of people, this might seem, you know what, you just want to consume content. You know, you, you just want somebody to just lay it out for you. In order to simplify that process, and this is something, you know, when you really want to, you're really stressed out, you really don't know, okay, you just want to get into the nitty gritty of the business, but you still want to absorb a lot of information, I would suggest you drop in at the Ellen MacArthur website. The Ellen MacArthur Foundation, they have the channel, the YouTube channel has more than 300 videos that would answer most of your questions around the current best practices for circular economy as well as for circular fashion. For the people who are interested to, who are interested to read, I give you these two links. This is uh, from Ellen MacArthur and again from the Circular Economy Club. These list out some very important reads. These list out some very interesting books. And all of these are recent publications about how the world is leveraging this paradigm of circular economy for the benefit. Now, once you've sort of assimilated all of this at the management level, you would definitely want your organization to absorb a lot of this information. So for a lot of those people, it might be an idea to go and participate in these free online courses which talk about the circular economy paradigm and also about sustainable fashion and sustainable clothing. I have, we will be sharing these links. You're welcome to participate in these courses. And these are especially useful for ensuring that you push the circular economy conversation into your organization. For those of you, some of you students who might be interested to do an MBA on this, I give you the world's first and only MBA focused on circular economy. Or for the some of you who might want to start out really, really low, there's also an introduction to circular economy uh, at just $25. The point I want to make out here, you know, by giving you these two sort of uh, huge variants, is that not just, it is this particular paradigm, this particular opportunity is not just for the, for the big businesses, but it is for everybody. It is for the SME, and the benefits of the circular economy are going to come into play when the entire network, when the entire chain starts building on this. And the benefits will not just accrue, but they will multiply as more and more stakeholders, more and more people in the chain start, put, start putting circular fashion, circular economy into practice. For, especially for young professionals and postgraduate students, this is something that I would highly recommend is to join the course at uh, Ellen MacArthur Foundation. And uh, it's, a, it's again an invite only, you have to apply for this. Not everybody can sort of just get into it. Uh, it it's an excellent course to spend time on. Another good resource is the Circular Economy website where they have a list of these courses online. So I'm just gonna quickly do a recap of the journey that we've had, two point. I've talked about education resources, I've talked about case studies, uh, I've talked about how to measure circular economy in your business. We've also, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we've also talked about the circular business model canvas, and then events, industry specific organizations to connect to, industry leaders to follow, educational videos to use for your, for your team, books as well as online courses in order to get your team up to speed on this. Having done all of this, you know, the question that a lot of you might already have in mind is, what are the next steps? So here I list about 10 steps for you to really start putting this, once you've sort of done your assimilation of all of this information, I would suggest you start with your customers, start talking to them to understand what is the existing circular uh, fashion uh, capability and the potential opportunity that they're looking at in their business. You could also study your supply chain for the existing capabilities. For example, if you are working with uh, Leva fabric fiber from, uh, from Birla, they're already up that particular uh, path already. You should definitely also conduct an internal workshop on circular fashion in order to ensure that you get team members 
onto the same platform in terms of the whole language. I would suggest you do an analysis, a best analysis to understand what are the macro drivers for a circular economy and where do you fit into that whole paradigm. The next point for sure would be to measure circularity in your own business to see that you where, where you are and where do you want to go. Once you've sort of done that, then you know, okay, you've, you've identified what are the focus areas which are aligned to the network in order to get the benefits as early as possible. You would then use the circular business models to capture information, material and process flows, to share that information, discuss it, and focus on particular areas to bring to drive circularity through. And obviously use the tools and processes that we've discussed to drive circularity in your business. I would definitely also want you to have an audit process to ensure that you measure your progress as you go through the circular economy paradigm. And lastly, I want to make it a point out here is to communicate, is to share this information, not just downstream, but also upstream. Because the more we share this information, the more people come onto this particular space, the more we will understand what the, what the opportunities are over here. So this is the point where we have covered uh, the major portion of the webinar. Uh, I would also take this opportunity here to talk about, uh, so at this point, I would ask you to put in your questions, whatever that, that come to your mind, and I would be happy to answer them uh, in, uh, at just beyond this webinar. But before we get to that, I also want to take this opportunity to share about the next panel discussion, which is upcoming, the next webinar, which is gonna be on sustainability communication. Uh, this is gonna be by Magdalena and Max, and that's gonna be held on the 10th of April. Uh, we will be sharing uh, details about this webinar for you to attend after the webinar. There will also be a short survey, and I will ask you to uh, just quickly give us your comments also. Thank you, Pranav. It was indeed quite insightful. I think most of the questions or a lot of people want to know, will they get a presentation after the uh, session? Yes, we will send out an email to everyone with all the details and the presentation. Yeah. I think I have a few questions for you uh, yeah. from the audience. We have one from Srinivas. I think he's, he has four questions. I'm going to frame it to you one by one. Sure. Remanufacturing re loop for circular fashion. Any examples of how companies are closing them? Okay. Remanufacturing loop for circular fashion. Remanufacturing loop. Loop, yeah. Okay, so uh, now here I have to make certain assumptions in terms of uh, what part of the uh, point uh, that we're talking about. So for example, if you're talking about uh, at the end of uh, the garment manufacturing, so for example, if it's pre-consumer waste, then those, those uh, garments could be repurposed or recycled up to other materials. However, can you, can you share it with an example, Pranav? Yeah, sure. Anybody so from the example, industry who's if, doing if this? You have, if you have, uh, uh, you know, fabrics, fabrics which are left over uh, at the end of your manufacturing process, then a lot of those offcuts or those fabric pieces are then put together. There's a business called Doodlash uh, and there are a lot of, lot of others who do that to create high value products using those particular materials. So that's one example. The other paradigm that is really coming in which talks about not just pre-consumer waste, but also post-consumer waste, is about taking the raw material, which could be the fabrics, which could be the garments, and then essentially breaking it down to fiber level, to cellulose level. And there are these technologies and pilots which are happening in India right now, which essentially converts that pre- or post-consumer waste back to either cellulose or plastics for that matter, if it is recycled plastic. And then that is again converted back to fiber. So that technologies are coming into play, yes. So does repair in fashion make for a viable business considering the low value of new goods and additional logistics involved in closing the loop? So as a globe, as a localized business, repair as a service and repair as a business model is going to see great days ahead, especially with the EU Green Deal coming in, which is specifying a right to repair. So most of the brands would then be forced to give this particular right to the customer to have it repaired at particular localized uh, endpoints or touch points. So yes, it is definitely uh, a huge opportunity. Max has also given us in a good example out here in yeah. the in the chat box, which is about upcycled denim in new collection. Yeah, thanks, Max. Are there any innovations in raw material that are examples of cradle to cradle design 
changes made in the industry? Uh, could you repeat the question? Are, are there the any innovations in raw material that are examples to find changes made in the industry? I think I'm missing something in the question out here. But if you're talking about new raw materials, uh, raw material innovations, which I can tell you. So I could tell you about. So for example, I could uh, give an example of uh, fishing nets uh, being repurposed, the nylon being repurposed to create a new fiber called Econil. So that's happening. There's also a lot of the plastics we know is again is being completely recycled to create a new polyester. We know for sure. A lot of the cellulosic materials, a lot of uh, the cotton, and these are the pilots which are in place currently to reap up, uh, to to recycle them back into cellulose to create to create new fiber. So yes, there's a lot of work happening out there. So Shrinivas is from Netherlands and he wants to contribute to the circular economy in India. What are the ways to enter the Indian market? Fantastic, Shrinivas. The first point I would give to you is to please connect to us at uh, at Gartex. We would love to. Uh, talk to you about the work that you're doing. Apart from that, uh, there are these uh, hotspots. For example, I mentioned, please look up Fashion for Good. Please look up uh, Fiki. There is a lot of uh, conversations happening out there, which you could ideally be part of, even CRB and CAIF. These are, again, hotspots that I've shared with you, which you can connect up to and uh, work closely with them. Yeah. So, how to leverage the tools in order to expedite, explore, and exploit circular economy? Great. Okay. So that's basically what you are asking me is the entire webinar in a line. <laughs> so, so I'm going to suggest to you, you know, uh, like I said, I'm not a big fan of just reading, 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 and studying. And hence, I've put it down in that particular order where what I want you to do is go through that little material just to get the language of circular economy then essentially as quickly as possible, I want you to identify certain focus areas and usually that would be materials for our garment industry. And then based on that, I want you to see what are existing possibilities around circularity that are happening in the environment around you because that's the way to leverage. We are all, all of us out here, we operate in silos. Somebody's a garment manufacturer, somebody's a fabric manufacturer. So without really connecting to the network, we cannot leverage circular economy. And the best way to know what's happening out there in the ecosystem to expedite the process, the one way I would give you is to be part of, for example, Gartex or be part of conversations at Black May Fashion Week. So there you'll understand what are the opportunities to collaborate. There you'll understand what are the opportunities to leverage because there might be some suppliers who are already doing something which you can just build on. There might be some customers who are already buying things which you are very keen to make. So that's where you find these connects. Yeah. Uh, Varun wants to know how to deal with microplastics and microfibers that are re released by polyester. Great, great question, Varun. That's again uh, a huge problem that is being looked at very closely. Uh, so I would expect in the near future, and I'm giving you a very specific example, literally the filters that are there in our washing machines, those are also going to be geared up to capture these microplastics, you know, so essentially because uh, all of us, you know, who are part of the industry would know most of this leakage, so to speak, happens at the consumer end, you know, where during the usage part of the garment, that's where a lot of this particular uh, microplastics get into the seas and the oceans. So essentially, that's, the, that's where we need to catch them. But of course, there's this huge journey that we have to reach, uh, to go to reach that particular point. But a lot of people are working on it, yes, for sure. The other way, and that is again being suggested, is to stop using polyester and stop using plastics totally. And there are also these interesting innovations coming up, which are biodegradable plastics, PHAs, and all of those. So there's a lot of research going out there. And for the people who are at the leading edge of this, I assure you, there is a lot of opportunity for you to study more, to learn, okay, where is a possibility for a new business to be made? Because a lot of people are looking for this, like you rightly said. Yeah. On the same lines, we have Shalendra asking us, where would you slot apparel manufacturing that focuses on using recycled polyester, cotton fibers, and then onward to fabrics and apparels? Okay. So for sure, you are already there. You already you have already started on to your circular economy journey, circular fashion journey. No question about it. So you are already moving up the chain. Now it's not just so. Obviously, you have taken care of your biggest cost and the biggest part of the business, which is fabric. 
but then there are also the other materials that go about building the garment together so during that entire process there could be the dyeing the processing the finishing part of it that's again ways where you can leverage circular fashion and circular economy not just that the packaging material that you use when you ship these goods that's again something for you to consider as to how circular is that once those garments reach the consumer at that particular point also when they purchase it you know there's this whole packaging material that is just sort of taken out and thrown away that's another something uh, there's uh, another thing for you to consider and then there is also this whole point about creating and closing the loop so for example once that entire journey has has been made circular right up to the customer point at that point also you could ask the customer to return the garment back to you so as to close the loop and believe you me once you start establishing a relationship with the customer and hm hnm has been uh, using this uh, to huge success once you start your once you get your customer locked in with you in this whole cycle of buy from me and return to me you can just imagine the lifetime value of that customer for you yeah i like this question how can we increase one second how can we increase consumer demand for sustainable fashion thus boosting benefits for circular economy wow that's a great question so that has a lot to do with consumer behavior and that's where the whole circular economy question or the circular economy paradigm then it moves into business models so for example rent the runway is one of the best examples of this whole changing consumer behavior and customer behavior and it's not just rent the runway we have very good examples in singapore we have some startups in india also who are working towards creating this whole changing consumer behavior as an example i want to share with you uh, this one business called lindstrom l i n d s t r o m and i'm sure there are more more a lot more uh, out there now these people are in the business of leasing workwear so at any given moment of time they have a couple of lakh uniforms per day on the streets and these organizations essentially lease out the workwear from from lindstrom use it over its life cycle and then return it back to lindstrom so there you see lindstrom has now a relationship with all of these customers these customers are locked in with this particular business because they are on a leased business model and it's a circular business so those are the opportunities that's how we are going to be changing consumer behavior we cannot sell we cannot guilt trip anybody into becoming sustainable that's not going to happen we have to offer better value a better business model we have to offer a better product which then a consumer buys we cannot scare a customer into buying circular so pranav tell me is sharing economy similar to circular economy uh yes there is uh, there is uh, a lot of overlap and again you know the whole share the circular economy and sharing economy a lot of people have a lot of perspectives around this so i would say there are a lot of similarities but are they the same no they are not because the circular economy is a much larger canvas than the sharing economy and is there any relevance of artificial intelligence very interesting question and uh, the artificial intelligence bit again is part of the whole business model the circular business models because think of the fact that a lot of the big businesses a lot of these big brands are now actively listening by actively listening what i mean is they are carefully monitoring all their touch points with the consumers and based on all of that information they are producing only the colors only the styles only the sizes or only the products that consumers are already showing an interest in so a lot of that production that would have normally gone to waste is not being made at all so that big data that artificial intelligence you know that whole so i uh, so i would stop a little short of big uh, artificial intelligence the example that i'm giving you out here is about big data but artificial intelligence i also see coming in a lot for example could be at the sorting stage so when you have this whole post consumer waste there is this particular sorting that we have to do before we recycle the garments so there could be artificial intelligence out there so yes it does play a big role this covid one second is this covid a pandemic would so would certain would certainly have an impact on sharing model what's your opinion i agree in the short term uh, people would be very careful about uh, what they are uh, what they are reusing what they are buying and i can understand that 
but uh, consider the fact you know we are now talking about uh, uh, you know uh, technologies which clean which make antiseptic so yes it's it's a mixed answer that i give you here in the short term there is going to be an impact but in the long term i see a lot of value see you have two very contrasting drivers out here one driver is the fact that people want do not want to wear something that has been worn by somebody else it's a huge factor i give you that but on the other hand i i think you'll agree with me you know that uh, a, there's going to be a lot of pain there's going to be a lot of job losses the economy is going to take a big tailspin so there's not going to be money around there's a lot of people who are for example who are looking to uh, you know uh, go to a particular event or want to participate in a particular occasion they will definitely be looking to rent for sure fantastic thank you pranam this brings to us uh, to the last question can you share your views on what will be the relevance of product life cycle assessment in this country in this yeah context of country with us so i'm sorry i i'm not entirely clear about uh, uh, that question mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. as as i understand uh, uh, the you know the 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 life cycle assessment essentially gives you the entire footprint or the entire sort of you know impact of a particular product and it does have a role to play uh, however if we are producing products or if we are making the uh, the entire supply chain circular then frankly speaking if the waste of one is the input for the next uh, then i think uh, you know a lot of that uh, you know life cycle assessment will kind of you know stop because then it's a continuum you know you it's the, the product never really loses value in terms of you know never goes to waste the end of its life in one avatar if i may call it is the beginning of its life in another avatar fantastic uh, pranav last views from you what do you think post covid where are we heading in terms of circular economy okay uh, i think uh, it's a great opportunity and uh, i'll tell you a couple of reasons i start with the biggest one in the room uh, as i mentioned earlier the governments are going to spend their way out of this uh you know hit that the economy has taken they are going to throw a lot of money to get industries started they are going to spend a lot of money to build infra uh, to put economy back on track uh, especially the developed economies they already have these regulations in motion around circularity around sustainability so i think a lot of that money would be going along those lines and as we are a manufacturing nation as well as a consuming nation but a lot of our money in india if we can also push towards ensuring that the new technology that the, that the new industry that rises from this entire problem is circular in nature uh, uh, it would make a big difference going forward i just want to also quickly mention out here i don't know how many of uh, i'm sure a lot of you would be aware of this but for the people who don't know the, there's already a waste management uh, sorry uh, a policy around waste uh, put in place by the government of india in 2016 uh, where brands have an extended producer responsibility uh, towards all the plastic for example that they put out into the environment so going forward we're going to see that the brands have to account for that if they put out so many tons of plastic into the environment how much of the plastic have they taken back in and reprocessed or recycled so all of those things are already happening uh i would hope that uh, the policy makers uh are sensible enough to push that money towards circular economy at the individual level at the manufacturer at the level of all of us i can just give you one big reason in order to go this way and that is the network effect because essentially the circular economy is all about building relationships is all about locking into each other's ecosystems and uh, once you've sort of done that uh you have business continuity and frankly speaking i think that's sort of the bar uh for uh, for any business is to have continuity so yeah i would focus on circular fashion again specifically for that yeah thank you pranav it was quite insightful uh with this we end the seminar for today i wish all the participants and the panelists a very warm and a nice uh, lockdown period till we meet again thank you so I much i would just take this one second yeah. uh, i just want to highlight uh, on the slide you will see there is a hashtag india wants circular 
this is a little initiative that we have been pushing uh, do look it up do follow it uh, and i would encourage you that if at all you are sharing anything on circular economy on sustainable fashion please use this hashtag india wants circular it belongs to all of us it's not just mine per se please do use it thank you so much for your attention i look forward to connecting with you again thank you thank you so much